So we've got, you know, kind of the first part of the quiz. We, we're not letting the user answer right now, but we do have some pictures and text, and we can kind of walk through the questions, or the user can, and that's pretty good. So now what we need to do is let them let them answer. And we're going to do kind of an imperfect solution first. And what we're going to do is, you know, have them answer with the last name, and, and they're going to have to type the answer in perfectly. Okay, but let's let's do that first. Okay, and um, what we're going to do is we so we've got the image that shows up, we've got the question text that shows up in the next button, but I'm going to add a text box. This is where they're going to enter their answer. The user is going to enter the answer. Okay, I'm going to call that answer text box. Okay, and then I'm going to have a button, and essentially it's going to be for submitting the answer. So they'll type something in, and they'll they'll say, "Okay, let's submit my answer." And you know, to make it look you know a little bit better, I'm going to add a screen arrangement and horizontal arrangement. I'm just going to throw the text box in there, and then the answer. Okay. Um, so it keeps updating. So so here's here's what it looks like. The person will type the answer in here, click on submit, and and it'll give them the answer. Now I'm going to add one more um, component, which is a label, and this label is going to be kind of my feedback, right? So once the answer, I want to tell them if it's right or right right or wrong, and I'm going to call that guy the feedback label. All right, it's going to just say correct or incorrect. All right, and we'll start it off with uh, nothing. Okay. Uh, one last thing I want to do. I think I forgot to rename my button. I like to make sure I name my components so over in the blocks editor I I know what to, you know what I'm dealing with. Okay, so I'm going to call this a submit button. Or how about submit answer button? Get rid of that one. Okay, so we've got. Now at least we've got the user interface for for entering a, a quiz. Okay, and now let's go to the blocks editor. And of course, really, what we need to react to is is when they click on submit answer and 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 answer something. I, I notice this hint is here. You know, this is a good place to give an instruction to the user. It's going to show up when this is empty. So let's go back just briefly to the designer. Come over to this text box. And here's that hint, and let's say, you know, you know, please enter an answer. And I'm actually going to say, this is a little, this quiz is a little weird. I'm going to say, please enter last name um, uh, with uh, first letter in caps. Okay, so, you know, it's not the best UI, but at least I'm telling them, you know how they should answer these, and you know so they, they know not to put the first name as well. Okay, so anyway, that's that's where we're at to start. So let's go to the blocks editor. What we need to do is react to the submit answer button. Okay, so here's my submit answer button. When that user clicks that, I'm assuming they've entered some answer here, and I want to check it. Okay. Um, well, first thing we need to do is we need the answers in here. Just like we've got our questions and our images, we need another variable, and that variable is going to be a list. So I need to define a variable. I'm going to call this my answer list. It's a list. And remember how we kind of set up our UI. So we need to make our answers just The um, last name. So Roosevelt. I think I spelled that wrong. It was Roosevelt. Okay. And one more. The second answer is Carter. Okay. And the third answer is Nixon. Okay. And notice first first letter of the name is capitalized 
and just the last name is is showing up up there. So we're we're doing doing pretty pretty well. Okay, so we've got our um, answer list set up. When they answer, we need to check their answer versus one of these items, the current item. Okay, so anyway, we're done with the next. So I'm going to kind of hide the next button, and so we can show this submit answer button. All right, and what I want to do is when they answer, I want to compare what they typed with the current answer. So what they typed is in this text box, and this text box is named the answer text box. So I'm going to go grab the text property from it. All right, and I want to compare that guy with an equals. Okay, and actually, um, you should use the text equals here. Okay, so I want to see if the answer text box dot text is equal to the a different thing. So the the other thing is the current item. So just like I grab a question with select assign, I want to grab an answer as well. So I'm going to grab this and copy it. So what I want to compare is what they typed versus not the first thing from question list, but I want to compare it with something from the answer list, not the first item, but whatever is the indexed item, the current question we're looking at or the current current answer since they're in the same order. Okay? So I'm going to go grab a reference to index and really what I'm going to ask is I'm going to use an if else. So I'm going to say if what they typed if what they typed is the same as the current answer we're on then I'm going to say correct, okay? And we've got this nice feedback labels where we're going to tell them something, okay? So I'm going to say correct here, and otherwise we're going to say incorrect. I'm sorry, this needs to be in the else part. So if they're not exactly alike, we are going to um, say incorrect. Okay, so I think we're doing doing pretty pretty well. Okay, we're doing well. So now we want to test this. So the user is going to come over to the app. When they click on the box, they should be able to answer something. And I'm going to type in Roosevelt. Okay, and with the emulator, the keyboard comes it up. But okay, so there's my answer, Roosevelt. I'm going to click submit answer. It should tell me correct. Okay, it did. Cool. Um, now let's type in something different. So if they just typed in Ruse and click submit, it tells me incorrect. So you know, at least with two tests, it looks like things are are working pretty well. And and you know, notice if I put in lowercase r, since my answer has an uppercase, it's not gonna, not gonna, it's, it's gonna still say incorrect. Okay, so at least for the first question, I am correctly telling them whether they're right or wrong. Okay, now let's see what happens when they click next. Okay, things are pretty good. It goes to the second question, but you'll notice there's some cleanup that we need to worry about. When they switch questions, we should blank out the answer text box and the feedback text box. So I'm going to reopen the, the next button because we need to kind of refine it. And whenever they click next, since we're switching the question, we're going to blank some things out. And it's pretty easy actually. I'm just going to grab the answer text box and we're going to change its text field to blank. And you can do blank by just hitting delete while in a, in a text block. And the nice thing is that'll cause the hint to come back up when it turns blank. And I also want to get rid of the correct incorrect because 
that shouldn't be kind of hanging around when they switch when they switch questions. I just copied the blank text. Okay, so when I click next, okay, good. It cleared that out, cleared out the feedback, and got to my Nixon question. Just for the heck of it, let's see if my answering is still working. Yeah, correct, good. And if I say something wrong, incorrect, good. If I click next, clears it out and goes to the next question. 